Let's make an arrow symbol that we can stretch without distorting its shape. We'll start by getting the rectangle tool and drawing a rectangle. This will be the shaft or body of the arrow. To give the arrow a little character, we'll make the feather end rounded. There is a rounded rectangle tool, but it's more fun to do it interactively. In the Appearance panel, open the Effects list, Check the Stylize group and select Round Corners. Increment the radius until the two radii meet, making a semicircle at both ends. The right-hand end will get covered up by the arrowhead. When we use Pathfinder to unite the arrow parts, the head and the shaft, the rounded effect gets removed, so first we have to make it permanent. In the Objects menu, with the object selected, click Expand Appearance. This turns the arrow shaft into an object with actual rounded ends, instead of a rectangle with a special effect applied to it. You can now see the new control points at the beginning of each curve. To make the arrowhead, we'll get the Polygon tool. Click and drag to start the polygon, and then, with the mouse button still down, Use the up and down arrows on the keyboard to set the number of sides to 3. Then use the shift key, with the mouse button still down, to align the polygon to the horizontal baseline. Now release the mouse button, switch to the select tool by pressing V, and rotate the triangle 90 degrees. Again, use the shift key to snap the rotation to the baseline. We'll use the green smart guides to make sure the triangle ends up centered on the arrow shaft. Finally, nudge the triangle a little further onto the shaft, just to make sure the control points for the curve are inside the triangle. That way they'll disappear when we use the Pathfinder's Unite command. Now we have a finished arrow shape. We'll give it an arbitrary fill color, say orange. And we'll increase the stroke width a few points so it's easier to see. Now let's turn it into a symbol. To do this, open the Symbols panel and just drag the arrow into the panel. Give the symbol an appropriate name and we'll leave the other settings as they are for the time being. Now the arrow on the artboard is an instance of the new symbol. Arrows are always different lengths, so let's see what happens when we scale the symbol. When we scale the arrow to be very short, the whole instance squishes proportionately, like we expect objects to do in Illustrator. But in the case of an arrow, that's not exactly what we want. Long and short arrows should have the same size arrowheads, and the same roundness at the opposite end. And it's really only the shaft that should be getting longer and shorter. So let's delete these distorted arrows and fix the symbol so it scales correctly. I'll move the Symbols panel so you can see its menu. First, open the Symbol Options panel. We could have done this when we first created the symbol, but I wanted you to see the distortion problem first. We'll click Enable Guides for 9-Slice Scaling, and you'll see why it's called that in a second. To edit a symbol, double-click on an instance. The original unscaled symbol art appears in isolation mode. You can see the four guidelines that divide the symbol into nine slices. The central slice is free to stretch, but the corner slices don't stretch at all. It's easier to understand if you just try it. We'll end Symbol Editing Mode by double-clicking on a blank part of the artboard. Now Alt or Option Drag to make another symbol instance. Drag to shorten it, and now the head and round end stay in proportion while just the shaft gets squished. We'll make another symbol instance, drag it to stretch it out full width, and again, just the shaft stretches while the two ends stay the same. This is exactly what we wanted. But what would happen if we stretched the symbol vertically? 
When we scale vertically, we find there are suddenly unexpected angles on the arrowhead. There weren't any control points there, so what's causing the distortion? To find out, we'll double-click the instance to go back into Symbol Edit mode. The strange angles correspond to the two horizontal scaling guides, which were letting the middle part of the head stretch while keeping the top and bottom corners frozen. In 9-slice scaling, the corners are always kept from stretching in either direction. Move the guides so the whole arrowhead is between them. Now double-click again to end editing, and now the head scales proportionally as we would expect. Let's make the arrow skinnier than the original and try out a couple of different lengths. Again, the head remains the same, the curved endpoint stays the same, and only the central shaft se section stretches. Now you have a reusable arrow symbol that can be lengthened or shortened anytime you need to without distorting.